Hello everyone and welcome. My name is John and I'm a 2D rig artist. Today I'll be showing you my rigging process in Toon Boom Harmony. Now I'm using premium version 20 but everything I do can be applied to version 21 as well. Harmony can be quite intimidating, especially for newcomers, so I recommend starting off with rigging props first. My first job working at an animation studio consisted of well, rigging props, it's a great gateway to get into Toon Boom Harmony, rigging, and hell, even animation if you want to. You don't even need an expensive graphics tablet or artistic talent. I, I just use my mouse and my laptop. It's actually quite simple, and you know what? I'll prove it to you. Okay, so now I've opened up Toon Boom Harmony. My workspace might look slightly different to yours. I've sort of moved some of the windows and panels. Feel free to customize your workspace however you like. Now, the first thing we need to do is talk about some of the settings. Yes, I know it's boring, but they are essential. If you want to adjust your settings, you just go into edit up here and then preferences down here. The only important settings in my opinion are the ones in general and the ones in advanced down here. I do what works for me, they might not work for you, but feel free to pause the video and copy these settings if you like. Now, moving along, some of these settings might not actually be shown to you yet, and that's simply because you have to enable them. Say if I come to this little menu up here, if I right click, see this drop down appears. So for example, I've got the coordinates and the deformers showing, the art layers, alignment guides, and each window will have their own options that you can choose to show. If I go over to the node window here, if I right click, it doesn't have any of these settings showing. But if I come up here and right click, I have all these settings showing. Starting to get the picture? When starting any project, it's kind of important to have some form of reference. Now, I'm gonna use the children's series of Bluey as an example. My nephew is currently addicted to anything Bluey, whether it's toys, TV, or cushions, or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and import some references into Toon Boom. To do this, simply go to File, Import, and then Images. Now here you can browse where you've saved your images. So I've sort of organized all my references into one folder. Um, I'm not going to need all of these, maybe just a character reference here. Um, when you do import them, you'll have a few settings here, like if you want to name it here. So if I name this, for example, there we go, that's a pretty generic name. You can choose to keep it as an original bitmap or to import it as a vector drawing. You can change the alignment and you can change the transparency. I'm just going to leave all this as it is because I don't really need to mess around with it. I'm going to go ahead and import another one because I am focusing on props, not characters. Right, so without touching anything, we've got two references that have been imported. Now, if you look into the node view, you can kind of see they've just all been dropped and piled on top of each other. It's not really convenient, so I'm going to move these just slightly out of the way here. Instead of having to like drag and align these up neatly, you can simply just highlight them all and press this little button here, the align nodes horizontally. We can see the nodes a bit more clearly now. What I'm going to do, instead of having it on this composite, I'm going to add my own. So if you want to add stuff to the node view, I'm going to simply press enter and then a little menu pops up. I'm going to add a composite as an example here. To connect these to the references, you can use the Alt key and it'll simply just split it in between the two here, if I do it correctly. There we go. So I'm going to put both of these references into this composite and we'll, we'll move it out of the way here. A good habit to get into when you're doing anything in Toon Boom Harmony is to move things on pegs, not the drawings themselves. It basically allows you to undo any mistakes you've done, whether you want to reset a peg, delete a peg, or just to have some sort of rotation or scale applied. I'm gonna I'm gonna give these two their own pegs. So if I use the shift and control button and press P, and now these two pegs, in fact, I'll give them their own peg, only using control P, because we only need one. So now that I've gave both these pegs their own peg, I can pretty easily move all my references in one go, or if I wanna move one at a time, just select this and move it. So let's start off by scaling up this peg here. So since this is on the left hand side, we're seeing it in front. I'm going to hide these ones, so I don't really need to see them at the moment. I can just select them, press the button D to hide, or I can press A to show them. I'm going to select the peg here, and I'm simply just going to scale this up. We can adjust it like pretty chaotically like this, or we can use Shift to maintain the scale. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna roughly scale this up by eye like this. Now that we've got our reference scaled, we can focus onto our other one. The prop reference is still behind the character reference. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just move it over here and now we can see on top. 
When moving pegs, if you want them to go on a specific axis, you can hold down the shift key and then move them in that direction. So this will no longer go up or down, it will only go left or right. But if I hold shift and move up and down, it'll do that, there we go. So I'm gonna move this over here slightly out of the way. So I'm gonna use the alignment guides to sort of get these up to scale and sort of make them a bit more consistent. So if I press the horizontal one, surprisingly enough, we get a horizontal alignment guide. So I want two of these, so I'm gonna press it twice. And then I'm simply gonna move this to, let's say, top of the father's ear. And then we'll move it down to the bottom of his feet, like so. And now, with these alignment guides in place, we can lock them, so we don't accidentally click on them. If I try and click here, it's gonna select the reference, not the alignment guide. Now, we can use this guide to scale our character. Let's try and make it as accurate as possible. I'm gonna select this peg, we're gonna move the bottom of his feet to this guide here. If you have your transform tool selected over here, under the tool options, you can hold down this little magnet button here and it'll allow you to choose what you want it to snap to. So for example, I have it snap to the alignment grid and snap on the line. This way, when I'm moving this little pivot point, it will snap the grid. You might think, yeah, that can, that's pretty cool, but again, annoying over time. Well, simply just hide the grid and then it will no longer snap to it. And now we can scale this reference image down to how big we want it. Now we've got these two references scaled as somewhat accurately as we can get it. I mean, this couch is slouching over to the side slightly, so it's not going to be 100% accurate. But now we don't necessarily need the character reference, so we can just hide that. Okay, cool. Now we don't really need the alignment guides anymore, so we'll just hide them. That was mainly just to scale the references. So, we've now got our scaled reference. Now, we're not focusing on character today, we're focusing on the prop. So we kind of want this prop to be somewhat in the middle of our little box here. Now we can use the alignment guides to use as a space for the center, but I simply use this little, little tool down here, which is called the safe area. It gives you this black X, which is effectively the center of the screen. So for example, if I show the alignment guides, if I select the vertical one, you'll see that it sits slap bang in the middle of this X. I'm going to put the prop in the center. So now we've got everything in place. So we don't accidentally sort of move or touch this. What you can do is put a lock on this drawing. Um, this can also be done in the timeline down here. If I press this little lock button here, it will lock everything that comes under this peg, including this thing here. So if I try and select it now and move it, I can't. And that's because I've locked it. I've locked not only this reference, but also this one, because they both come under the same peg. So say if I didn't have this one peg, I'd have to lock both of these manually, which is a bit of a, a, bit of a pain in the ass. So I like just to have one peg, connect it to both, and that way you can simply lock them on and off. That concludes it for episode one. Thank you to those who have watched until the end. We've covered quite a lot of the basics so far regarding importing images and preparing references. Next episode, we'll cover how to create custom brushes from the references we've added. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.